Pinion bearing preload. When you're measuring pinion bearing preload, you're actually measuring the friction between the pinion bearings and the pinion shaft. You'll need an inch pound torque wrench, place it on the pinion nut, and rotate it. Read only the reading while it's moving, not when it's breaking torque. Most cars fall between 15 and 25 inch pounds of rotating torque. Measuring backlash. To measure backlash, you'll need a dial indicator. What we're actually measuring when we're measuring backlash is the play between the crown gear teeth and the pinion gear teeth. We're going to use a magnetic dial indicator. In this case, we'll place the probe of the dial indicator in line with the rotational motion of the crown gear so we get the most accurate reading of play. You'll want to push the dial indicator up against the crown gear tooth to preload the dial indicator about half to three quarter turn on the needle. Then what you're going to do is you're going to move the play of the crown gear up one way until the crown gear, you can feel the crown gear stop against the pinion teeth. Then you'll zero the dial indicator and pull back in the opposite direction. Record that reading. In this case, we're about six thousandths of an inch. Generally, backlash specs will fall between eight to twelve thousandths of an inch on average, but it varies, so check your manual. Checking crown gear runout. When you're checking crown gear runout, what you're actually measuring is the warpage of the crown gear. What we need to do is rotate the pinion gear so the crown gear rotates. We'll use a dial indicator to measure this. In this case, we're going to grab a magnetic dial indicator once more. And we'll place the dial indicator 90 degrees to the crown gear on the crown gear flange. Secure the dial indicator firmly so it doesn't move. Then zero the dial indicator. Now you'll rotate the pinion gear until the crown gear rotates. Sure you go around one turn. Don't count little blips on the gauge because that's likely little indentations. Record your general sweeping motion. It'll go negative and possibly positive. Treat it like a number line record the variation. Most specs fall between two to three thousandths of an inch. Measuring axle end play. To measure axle end play, in this case, we're gonna use a vertebrae dial indicator. We're gonna clamp the vertebrae dial indicator onto the drum brake backing plate. If you have disc brakes, you'll clamp the dial indicator onto either the caliper bracket or the disc brake backing plate if it's solid. Be sure to preload the dial indicator half to three quarter turn on the dial face. Secure the dial indicator in such a way that it stays steady. Now, once it's steady and it's preloaded to half to three quarter turn, push the axle inwards and then zero the face of the dial indicator. Now pull out on the axle and record the reading. In this case, eight thousandths of an inch. Checking pinion gear to crown gear contact pattern. Okay, in this segment here, I'm pointing to the concave side of the crown gear, which is called the coast side of the crown gear when we go in reverse. The opposite side will be the drive side or the convex side of the crown gear when we go forward. We're actually going to paint those surfaces with a special marking compound. In this case, we're going to use Prussian blue. We'll coat three to four teeth on both the convex side and the concave side. And then we'll rotate the crown gear via the pinion gear while placing opposite resistance on the crown gear. 
The mark left behind on both the convex and concave side will tell us how that differential gears are making contact with each other. There is an ideal placement for that. If it's incorrect, it could cause noises or premature failure of the differential. Okay, I'm going to take a little Prussian blue here and I'll put it on the end of a paintbrush. Then I'm going to spread that Prussian blue on three to four of the convex teeth. Nice and uniformly. Now on the concave side, also paint three to four teeth uniformly. Okay, we're ready to turn the crown gear now. So we'll turn the pinning gear. And as we turn the pinning gear, we're gonna hold on to the crown gear and oppose the motion of the pinning gear. So we're gonna hold resistance against that rotation. And we're gonna work it back and forth until that crown gear goes around a complete turn and the paint passes through contact with the pinning gear. Now we're gonna reverse the direction and hold the opposition in the opposite way. Now we're actually going reverse right here, so we're going to check the coast side of the teeth. Again, completely ensure that you're around one complete turn, and then check the contact pattern. We're now looking at the convex side of the crown gear tooth, which is a drive side, and we can see a little bit of heavy toe contact here, which is not ideal. And if we look at the concave side, which is a coast side, or where we have to make contact with the pinion in reverse, we have a condition which we call heavy heel contact, right in this zone right here. To correct that, we'd have to adjust the crown or pinion gear accordingly, check your manufacturer's specifications and recommendations.